Hello, my name is Father Chris Bezuras, and I work in the Office of Religious Education in the area of adult faith formation. I am also a member of the Liturgical Commission for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, and I would like to, to welcome you to our video for altar server coordinators. And I'd like to thank you for taking on this ministry in our church. I'm not going to be dealing with a lot of details about how to do this or how to do that, because I believe that that should be from a fruitful dialogue from your pastor and with yourself, and also in a way that there are certain particularities about your parish community and the layout of your sanctuary that you have to figure out for yourself. But what I would like to do is to stress more the important qualities of the coordinator for altar servers. Let's take a look at some important qualities for a coordinator. There are all sorts of qualities that could be helpful, but I believe that one of the best is flexibility. This could be the first ministerial experience for most children and youth in the church. The first time that they've been trusted with a task or some responsibility in their community. And so flexibility has to be part of how you work with them. Part of that flexibility comes through in an open communication with the pastor. The pastor must be a part of this dialogue with you and the servers. In how you understand what he asks, what he requires of them, and in how you can better serve the community at prayer. You also must realize that your role must be working in partnership with parents. Children and youth don't make the decisions of their lives on their own. They make it in conjunction with their parents who ultimately set the tone and will allow or disallow what their children will do. So you must continue to work with the parents and have a great sense of communication with them so that that flexibility allows for the best way to serve the needs of the community. And that flexibility will also help you to learn how to engage children with diverse means of learning and ability. Not all children are the same. Not all learn the same. And you're dealing with a variety of ages, from anywhere as young as 8 to as old as 18. And so you must be able to adapt to the different learning methods that children have. This is also a great opportunity to talk about children with special needs. I've had many occasions where I've been a presider at a Mass and servers were present that had special needs such as Down syndrome or autism. And yet they were fully able to carry out their tasks. And in that I could see that those who prepared them and those who work with them show a great amount of flexibility and a desire to include everyone. This is an opportunity for us to extend to these young people a chance to participate in their community and in praising the Lord in a certain way. But along with flexibility comes another very important quality, which is patience. When you're working with children, you have to be patient. It must really be a constitutive element of who you are. Children need repetition and reminders. They need to be able to learn and make mistakes at their own, their own path, their own rhythm. And so that patience in being able to repeat and being able to continue to guide them will be so helpful. Sometimes just taking a quick minute to prepare yourself or being able to step back and say, what's going on in his mind right now? What is she thinking or not perhaps considering can help you find the best way to work with them. And just remember, things will not always go as planned. And that doesn't mean that children can't be a part of this experience of liturgy, because we know that even with adults, things don't go as planned. And so with children, they bring in a special element of that patience. Because we have to remember, we're not here to create perfect performers. We are here to form disciples. And part of liturgical ministry is forming a disciple who will take this, uh, this moment to serve and share it with those in the world. And so we have to find incentives and ways to reward their efforts and to continue to encourage them to follow their path in Christ. 
Now, some of these uh, elements can also be helpful when you're working with adults who also can serve in this ministry. Being an altar server is not relegated only to children. Adults can also perform this service, and in many times, they are required because children are in school or have other programs that take their time. And having a good group of adult servers or acolytes can be just as helpful to a parish community. And we must be very careful to make a distinction between an adult server and a sacristan. A sacristan has his or her own responsibilities in preparation for the liturgical service. But servers should be a planned ministry of people who are prepared and trained to help at the altar. Some of the foundational elements of serving at the altar are service and leadership. Service as leaders of prayer. As I said before, this may be the first experience of these children in ministry. So it's important for you to help begin the conversation about what interests them in this ministry. Why do they want to serve? Is it because their older brother or sister are serving? Is it because that's what mom thought it would be a great idea to do? While these are not bad, it's important to help them develop a different foundation, one in which they see themselves as a key element in the worship service and a means by which they can praise God through their service. So what are their thoughts about what it means to serve? Because even though it's in the name, sometimes we don't always think about service when we're called forward. And so that conversation is so helpful. Part of that conversation also, a great part of it, is to help them see that a life of service is centered on the Eucharist. The presider, the deacon, the lectors, the ministers of communion, the altar servers, the choir, we're all gathered here to lead people in the worship of God through the Eucharist. And so to concentrate their lives around the Eucharist gives them a solid foundation in their growth in faith. It's also important to help them understand that all ministers are leaders. And even altar servers can be called to lead the people in prayer. And this may not be something they've ever thought, but they're going to be visible. They're going to be present. They wear special clothing. They perform special tasks. So in order for them to understand that, they must realize that they're going to be leading people in prayer. So their behavior, the manner in which they stand, in which they carry objects, the reverence they show in the celebration of the Eucharist has a great way of helping people to pray. On the reverse side, when they don't show those qualities, it's important for them to understand that they can also distract people from prayer. And that can certainly have a difficult effect on the community. And so part of that is to lead them through this understanding of how they're leading people in prayer to help them see that although they have certain tasks to perform, they're also meant to be praying at Mass. It's not so much that they remember when to bring the book or to make sure that the cups are placed in the right place, but to realize that this is also part of their prayer, that they don't only do so with their mouths, but they also pray with their posture their gestures, and the care they show in what they do. This helps them form a sense of reverence in the Eucharist. This is not something that's inborn. It's something that we learn as we come to understand more deeply what the liturgy is. And you have a great opportunity to help these young people continue to grow and develop that sense of reverence and that personal connection with Christ you can help shape them into future leaders by entrusting them with responsibilities. Some of your servers may be older, and it's a great opportunity for them to demonstrate some leadership by helping out a younger server, by helping out those who are new at the ministry of serving, by taking leadership in different roles and special liturgies and other things that require someone who has a bit more experience. And this is a great way to encourage them that they can see themselves as serving the community in various ways. Another foundational element of this ministry is that serving at the altar is waiting on the Lord. Altar serving is a real assistance. It's not just a nice thing that we have the kids help out and that they look cute in their little outfits. Altar serving 
has a great and rich history in our church. Their participation is not simply a nice thing, it's a real help to the community and especially to the presider. It allows for the easy flow of worship. That liturgy continues to draw people into the mystery of Christ and that they are a key element of this. Part of that is to help them see that they are waiters waiting at the table of the Lord. What if they were waiters at the Last Supper? What would that be like? How would they be? Would they pay attention to the needs of those at table? Well, here in serving at the altar, we're serving at the Lord's Supper. And they get a chance to be part of that with all the other ministers and all those gathered. So serving at the altar means serving Christ and serving others. No one serves in isolation. Liturgy is a church together moment. So it's not just making sure that the priest is there, but that all the ministers are present, understand what they are to do, and help in the way that they are being asked. Now service requires a certain level of commitment. Earlier I had mentioned that one of the areas of flexibility is in the schedule with parents and children. You must always be in open communication with the parents of the servers to understand their needs and their schedule as best as possible and to plan for the eventuality that you may have difficulties in scheduling. Part of that is that parents and children need to be clear on what is expected of them. By being clear with them about what they are required to do and when they are to show up to serve for liturgy, and what roles they are meant to have, and how often they are to serve during a month, or however you arrange your schedule, helps the parents to be able to judge and arrange their schedule and work with yours, and it also helps you to make sure that there is adequate servers for all the liturgies. This helps them become a valuable part of their family life of faith by showing what discipleship means. Working with the parents helps them to understand also that they take a part in forming the faith of their children, that they are helping them to grow in their understanding of how the church prays and interacts with those in need. And so it's important that that clarity be present. They also should learn the different parts of Mass and the objects they will be using. I know that sounds like a no-brainer, but it's actually an important element. I can recall one time as I was training a group of servers, I was going through and naming off all the different vessels. I was showing it to them and giving them the name and having them repeat it. And this one boy raised his hand and says, why do we got to learn all these funny names of all these things? And I said, well, okay, let's imagine that we're at Mass and I'm the priest that's presiding. And I call you up and I say, Joe, can you get the thing? It's over on the thing and put it on the thing. Is that going to be helpful? And he realized that while there are some strange names of the things that we use, it's important that they learn them, and they can. Again, it's by way of use, by way of experience, and by reinforcing that they are able to do these things. Another important element is that you must lead by example. You must demonstrate the way of serving that you would like them to have. That includes fairness, being just with all those who are serving, really evaluating what skills they have and what they can handle. Make sure everyone has a chance to serve in a variety of ceremonies and liturgies. Making sure that all people get a chance to share their gifts and their talents. You don't have to do this alone. You may have been asked to serve as altar server coordinator, but that doesn't mean that you have to do everything all by yourself. Having a group of parents or other volunteers can be very helpful. Sometimes forming a small group can just help you with a lot of things such as calling those members who need to be reminded, being able to find substitutes. Uh, if you don't have a particular skill for scheduling and and uh, appointing and such as that, uh, the different servers and members of the team, then having someone who's really good at coordinating schedules would be an essential element to your team. 
This also allows others to bring their gifts to the table, to allow them a chance to take part in this. Part of that also is to connect with your religious education program in the school. Both of those areas of parish life are involved in liturgy, and they have a lot of those who would love to serve. And so by being in contact with your director of religious education or parish catechetical leader, being in contact with your school principal, and being able to coordinate and train those who are going to serve can be a great opportunity for involvement and spiritual growth. Another very important element for any altar server coordinator is to follow very carefully the rules and the guidelines of our Safeguard the Children project. You have an immense responsibility to care for our younger brothers and sisters. It requires a keen awareness and implementation of our Safeguard the Children procedures. You must be very, very good and installing and, in, and incorporating those into your ministry experience. You may even include being a part of the parish's safeguard committee to make sure that our young people are able to serve in an environment that allows them the fullest growth possible. Remain current on all certifications and updates. Make sure all of your volunteers, if you do any field trips, if you do any uh, excursions or any other sorts of things, if you have other adult volunteers, that they are current on their virtues training, they have their fingerprinting, uh, fingerprinting with the archdiocese, and that all of those certificates are filed in the parish office. Their leadership may encourage young people to serve in other ways. And so I would like to thank you again for your time and commitment to serving God and His people. Jesus said, let the little ones come to me. And by inviting our young people to serve in liturgy in this capacity, you've given them an opportunity to have their own relationship with Christ, to serve the community, and to praise God with their gifts. Thank you.